Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about accountability. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, as a software engineering tech lead, what does it mean for you to expect a software engineer to hold themselves accountable? Well, usually the way that management thinks about accountability is that there is a deadline and your team is responsible for meeting that deadline. Or there is a production issue, something is broken in production and you are expected to fix it. It's your job, nobody else's. That, that's usually the way it goes. And this is sort of, this, this is a very difficult thing to explain, but this is where like the mashup of DevOps and like the business and so forth, this is where it's almost to me, it's like a swirl of different entities in, in a bucket, right? It's mixing together, it's almost indistinguishable what you're actually talking about. Because some people, when they t think about DevOps, they think about one thing and some people think about another thing. But from a business perspective, the accountability and DevOps is almost like a synonym for, a synonym for each other. You you run it, you own it, or you, you build it, you own it type of mentality right you are accountable nobody else and how that works in practice that's a difference of video it's more usually more complicated than that but that is how most people think about it the way that I usually look at it is uh, a slightly different because the accountability uh, I mean this is important but the I have some of my own thoughts on this in my teams so the way that I run it is that we are accountable uh, or rather the guys that I uh, work with uh, and the girls uh, usually I tell them that uh, I have a few criteria that are very important at least to me that we follow within the team and then when it comes to management and so forth I usually tell them the same thing where the problem is, as I, say, I like to say, the problem is what the problem is. Uh, we are definitely going to be accountable. So in other words, if something you know breaks in production or so forth, then yes, we are accountable to fixing that. That I, I have no problems with. But one thing that is a popular one, which is, you know, we have a deadline, you need to meet it. There's a, you know, you, you have to fix it, etc., etc. And then what I usually tell people is that you are paying these people for a certain effort you have put them in a situation where they have to do something and i have been in situations like this with other in companies where you know they literally expect you to this is a classic one crunch weeks they want crunch weeks and they want to put really effort uh, real effort and so forth it's because the product people need to to do things as quickly as possible and i almost always say the same thing to them that's not a good idea and if I have any effort, any, any influence whatsoever here, and luckily for me here in Sweden, there's a few labor laws that put, makes this a bit uncomfortable. Uh, I will tell them that we don't do this. What we do is that we are sensible about how we structure our work. In other words, rather than having people stressing out and trying to meet the deadline that you created, you created this for the software developers, nobody else. Instead of doing that, we are going to make sure that we work as effectively as possible. And then if that is enough, we will meet the deadline. If it is not enough, then the deadline has to, we have to either discope things or the deadline has to be moved. Because we cannot put ourselves in a situation where we are actually forcing people to work overtime and so forth to bridge our own incompetence as managers or as with the, our work process etc etc and this is where I argue the I try to do things a little bit differently because usually what happens is that a company might say to their developers that you know you are expected to work overtime and so forth to fix all these things but at the same time they're not actually interested in doing anything except like basically asking their people to work faster. The thing that I usually say is that if you are continuously seeing that things are not moving as fast as you want, then you need to figure out how do you speed up the process. In other words, t t picture this. If they are trying to move a wagon with triangular wheels, triangle wheels, and I say that's really stupid because you're going to force people to, f like they're going to have to push that fucking cart a hundred times harder 
than if you just put on a round wheel. So that's what we do. We don't force people to work harder in a situation where we can actually quote unquote make things work smarter if that makes sense. That is what we do because you're going to burn your people out and the reality is that that's usually it's because uh, this is usually a mental blocker for a lot of people. Well, yeah, but if we're putting time into like actually optimizing things, we're going to lose time in deployment speed or development speed and I go, "No, actually not because as long as you can meet the deadline, you don't have to make it to the finish line faster so that you can start on the next deadline faster. What you should be doing is making smart investments for the future so that you can continuously develop, uh, deliver on all deadlines without problems, right? The thing that, uh, that's how I usually communicate with the stakeholders and usually they are fine with that because luckily for me I'm usually in a position uh, or I have been in a position where I've been able to make these sorts of things work. When I haven't been able to make them work I've simply do the thing that you should do as a software developer and that's basically to say, to, to make a stance for yourself. Do you care about the, this job so much that you will spend overtime all the time for this company and because you're basically bridging the incompetence of other people uh, and be, by being nice because there is no 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 business is sustainable if the idea is that you're basically paying people uh, you, you're you, you're not compensating people correctly you're basically asking them to do things uh, for you for free in essence and that's not a sustain in my opinion that's not sustainable or if you're fine with that, go for it. If you're not fine with it, go and find yourself somewhere else to work, usually. That's how I think about it. The thing that I usually put as a requirement when it comes to the software developers, those when I say that you're accountable, is that I expect you to be accountable for a few key things within the team. In other words, you do not have an excuse when we talk about, well, if, for example, if you don't know how to do something, then you are expected to figure out how to do that. And the best way to do that is to talk to your coworkers or to raise issues or so forth and so forth. You have no sympathy from me, none. If you are a lone wolf type of character who sits and gets blocked and then doesn't talk to anybody. Yeah, I expect results, always. I'm a result driven software developer and results come down to two things, competency and teamwork. These are the only two things that will make uh, you know make us actually move forward and I have tons of developers that I've worked with which uh, you mean they usually get it they understand it very quickly like we work really I work really really hard usually with my software teams to make sure that they understand that you can always ask for help you can always have this we try to have that environment but at the same time I can't force you to ask for help I can't force you to read the documentation or do all these things for you I'm not your dad or your mom I can't like treat you like a child and I have had developers like that and I'm not talking juniors now I'm talking all, all the way up to senior level where they will not produce anything and then just say no nah, it can't be done and I go yeah it can be done it's written over there oh okay cool yeah and then they do that a hundred times over like they, you can't I cannot trust that they will be able to autonomously solve their own problems and I can't even trust that they will ask for help if they don't know how to figure it out and they will blame this situation or oh, they will blame everything like everything from oh yeah it's very complicated or oh, this team didn't reply in an email and I'm like okay they didn't reply to your first email did you send two did you send three did you talk to the manager what have you done to resolve the situation and they go oh I just tried it and then I didn't do anything else okay cool bye bye you're gone like immediately that's you behaving like a fucking child and that is something that never flies with me because now you're not holding yourself accountable. You are looking at yourself as some type of weird victim in the situation where if I've hired you to do a job, that means that you understand what needs to be achieved and you understand that sometimes there might be things that you have to creatively solve yourself or at the very least ask for help. If you're doing none of that and you're just basically sitting, it's sort of like, I mean, it's almost like some dude who is you know, laying tarmac for a road and then there's a stick on the ground and he just sits there and go yeah I can't continue because the stick is in the way and I go go and move the fucking stick because we need to relay the road yeah but that, well that's not my job I'm the guy who drives and I go okay cool I'll find someone who's uh, who is competent have a great day 
So what I want you to take away from this is that usually the thing that people talk about when they say that software engineers are, should hold themselves accountable, it's one part delivering on deadlines and one part actually the fixing bugs and being on call and so forth and so forth actually feeling a sensation of ownership right uh, I usually try to say that when it comes to deadlines and so forth it's not for me just about engineers this is a mutual like a symbiotic relationship between the engineers and product management and so forth because I don't think it's right, it's not smart to create these sort of systematic uh, solutions where you're basically just adding more work and so forth onto the developers and asking them to work overtime and so forth and so forth just because you don't have uh, a better way of structuring the planning and the overall uh, deliverables and so forth. That's not sustainable in my opinion and I do things a little bit different there but that's usually what I communicate towards the stakeholders if I'm running the team. To the team itself I always do the same thing when it comes to holding yourself accountable absolutely if there's a bug or something like that we have some rules for usually how I look at this where you know, if there's a production issue, we drop what we're doing, we focus on that thing until it's solved. And we always try to work as a team. That's number one. Communication is everything. It's actually the first rule of uh, when I set up a team. You over communicate about everything. You do not sit by yourself and then blame the world for not coming to you and fixing things for you. You ask for help, you communicate with your coworkers, you prioritize helping your coworkers above your own work if necessary, and you make damn sure that if you are blocked or something like that that you tell people so that you can learn so that you can take on ex more responsibilities that is number one in terms of holding yourself accountable and the second thing is as I said if you find if I find that you don't try to solve your own problems in terms of you, you're not actually attempting to do any of this stuff well the thing that you are hired to do is not quote unquote just to code. I have hired you or the company's hired you to solve problems. If I find that the only time you produce anything is if you have a very fine, very simple little coding task and that's all you can do, but I can't ask you to even go and connect with another team and ask them about documentation or specification for an API or anything like that. If you can't deal with the environment, if that makes sense, th without basically just sitting down and saying, oh, I don't know how to fix that and so forth, then you're useless. Uh, as a software developer you're not a good team member in my opinion at the very least and usually that's at the, that that's to me it's an un, it's unsustainable because people who hold themselves accountable is they are focused on the results they don't think in terms of oh that's not my job if it's not your job but you see that it has to be done in order for you to progress then you go and ask whoever's job it is and try to raise it so that the team is aware of that you have a blocker or something, you're communicating, you're exp holding yourself accountable for the result. That is what's the, it, it's in, that's the important part. The fact that it's not specifically the thing that you know how to do or so forth and so forth is irrelevant. If you're not helping the team achieving uh, to achieve the goals of the team, then you are not holding yourself accountable to the results. And those that's the thing that at least I care about. Results is everything. If uh, if we're not uh, re achieving our goals and working as a, that necessi usually necessitates that we work as a team, then in my opinion you're not holding yourself accountable. Uh, that's how I feel about it. Have a great day.